Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the live chat. I have not gotten on here for a few months. Been a little bit busy. Who do we have in the chat tonight? We got Fred215. What's going on, Fred215? So I figured I would just hop on tonight, just BS a little bit. Maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, the stuff that I covered since I've been away. I think that I had covered... Probably the biggest thing that I covered was the television shootout, TV shootout of 2021. That's probably the biggest thing that I covered this past month that I've been away from doing the live streams. <clears throat> I mean, if you're not subscribed over to the other channel, subscribe to the other channel, uh, Dynamically Challenged. That's where usually I keep these live streams, but I, I figured I would just... Uh, Come on today because I'm uh, sober today, so we I would just keep it over here today. So keep everything nice and uh, copacetic and everything pleasant. Keep it on spare change. But if you're not subscribed over on Dynamically Challenged, go over to Dynamically Challenged as well. Subscribe over there. Help a brother out. Subscribe over to subscribe over to Dynamically Challenged. There's some links in the video description somewhere. And. Uh, Got a bunch of emails coming through all of a sudden. <clears throat> but yeah, man, we uh or yeah, we we as in myself and Bill and also my wife. I don't know if you guys watch the TV shootout, but um yes, I do have a partner. She's a female, she's not a male. I know I've gotten some comments on that, but she my wife did go to the TV shootout for 2021 this year in New York, which I think was like two weeks ago. Uh, we shot the TV shootout, which was which happened on a sun was a Sunday. Yeah, it was on a Sunday. Uh, she helped me out with the camera and doing the doing the switching of the video footage and stuff like that. So shout out to my wife. Thank you for that one. Um, but yeah, man, uh, excited. Normally I don't do TV reviews on the channel, but I wanted to. You know, I've been covering the TV shootout for Value Electronics for the past. For the past, I don't know, five years now, since like 2016, I think it was, when I met the man at the uh, the Sony, the Sony A1E unveiling. So uh, ever since then, I've been uh, I mean, not, I mean, not, I'm not a sponsor. I'm not going to cover the label there. So uh, yeah, we covered that this weekend, and the winner of the shootout was the Sony A90J, which was sony's flagship 4k oled which i think was the right choice i hold on a second my tv had died for some reason what's going on here which i think was the right choice The thing I thought was a little bit weird when when I was checking out the shootout was that the LG for some reason, sorry for all you guys that bought LG C ones, is it the C one? I don't I don't know my TV monikers right now, or model numbers, but it's for whatever reason, man, that uh, LG OLED was purple. For whatever reason, the blacks in that TV was purple, so it looked really bad. So automatically. To me, if you're watching a dark movie, if you're watching something like The Dark Knight or something, just, just a lot of blackness in it. I mean, there was like purple on the whole entire left side of the screen. So I don't know if you saw that stream or not, but it was just bad. Automatically, you're disqualified if you can't you can't show true blacks and you're an OLED. So that's, that's bad. Automatically, that's done. I think the Hisense had a very bad case of raised blacks that was bad and that's like some new technology they're showing off it was like dual cell that's that's their 75 inch dual cell tv where there's like <clears throat> there's like a, a, a black and white panel in front of like a color panel and then you have like another layer of uh, led lights so the first layer is supposed to like enhance black levels Unfortunately, it didn't work. Not from what I seen. That was a big fail on their part, and I thought that was going to be possibly one of the TVs that I would, uh, I'd want to own. But no, that didn't. That failed too. And then the LG Micro LED, 
that was just bad as well. Same kind of issue, like bad, bad algorithm or whatever it is for local dimming with the LG mini LED set. <clears throat> I think it was the QNED set. The QNED set I, I had planned on really purchasing. That was the first one I, I purchased because I didn't want to get an OLED this year. I wanted to get one of these mini LED sets because I figured like you would get all these dimming zones. So you would get some amazing black levels. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the Q the QNED and also the uh the dual cell high sense just wasn't up to snuff and they just didn't do anything uh amazing, at least when I was there at the shootout. So I do think that the winner of the shootout was the right choice i mean it just won for black levels hdr was it the brightest tv i don't think it was the brightest tv but yeah man uh hdr blacks were the best didn't have any purple shading whatever on the left side of the screen which you can see if you watch the stream it's on the stream i think it's on the uh, my super cut but it's definitely on the, the full six hour stream that's a long stream you're gonna have to get through it it's on there as well. The motion was like the best. We did the, the motion test with the scrolling texts. Scrolling text, that was the Sony just won there. That was like the smoothest one. And that's with motion interpolation turned off. No, there was no motion flow or anything like that with any of the TVs. Sony uses the motion flow. So um, Sony won that one handedly. <clears throat> and I think overall that was the right choice. That was the right choice for the for the best TV set. So, I mean, I think if you're going to get a TV set and uh, you didn't need like 8K, then clearly I think the Sony A90J was the best set to get. So kudos to Sony. Kudos, Sony, for winning the, the, the 4K TV shootout. And as far as the 8K TV shootout, very clearly there is no hands down. The best TV set was the LG. The Sony Z9J just pretty much got demolished in every category. Like I, sorry to say, like I thought that. Uh, yeah, listen, I like Sony TVs. Um, I love Sony products. I use a Sony camera. I got a couple Sony cameras in this room right now. I got one right here. This is right here. This is a little little tiny Sony camera. Um, got Sony headphones on my face. Got another Sony pair of headphones here. But yeah, LG just did a better job in the 8K shootout. <clears throat> just better all around. Better HDR, better brightness, better black levels. Destroyed it with black levels. I mean, you just not... Better with upscaling, um, more detail. Can you tell a difference from seating distance where we were with these sets? It was like a 75-inch set, 75 inch set, inch set for both. And we were probably about, I want to say about eight to ten feet away from each set. Was it was it a major difference between going 4K and 8K at about ten to twelve feet away? With with the 75 inch set, I'm gonna to have to say it wasn't like a, a drastic major difference but there is a slight difference. It's almost like if you're saying if you have a 4K, 4K cell phone, if you have a screen on your cell phone, cell phone screens are like, they're tiny, right? They're tiny. This is like, this is a Sony, this is a Sony phone. This Sony phone has a 4K screen. This is a, an Xperia cell phone, right? It's got a 4K screen. Can I tell the difference between this size screen at maybe like a foot away from my face between like an iPhone, which is like, a, I think it's less than a 2K screen? Uh, sure, yeah, you can tell the difference. Is it tough to tell a difference? Yeah, it's pretty tough. But, I mean, if you're paying attention, you can tell that sharpness is definitely there especially at a seven inch six inch screen size at 12 inches from your face or even like like 24 inches from your face <clears throat> and i would say the same would apply that it's minimal at at like 10 12 feet away 
from a 75 inch 8k slash 4k tv screen size as well that there is for sure a difference in in clarity and resolution and uh as far as like native 8k stuff um yeah for yeah man for sure the the lg just looked better overall it just did everything better black levels the highlights speculars and stuff like that man the lg was just the better set for 8k <clears throat> So I mean, I was really, uh, I was really kind of gun ho about picking up a Sony Z9J this year because I thought it was going to be kind of like the bee's knees, you know, this year. But that just, uh, yeah, man, that wasn't the case. It just, <laughs> it just wasn't the case. Um, which uh, leads me. Which leads me over to the next uh, conversation that we, I guess we can talk about since we're talking about AK would be the JVC sets that were announced recently, which are the JVC NX NZ. I think what is it? The NZ nine, eight and seven or something like that. Sorry, I don't know the uh, I don't know the model numbers at the top of my head, but I know it, it's their their flagship model which is, I think it's the NZ9. Somebody write it down in the comment section if you know the model numbers. It's late. I don't know the model numbers. It's on my head. <clears throat> but I think it's the NZ9, which is like 25 Gs. A lot of money if you think about it during the pandemic. How many people have a 25 grand and drop in a projector? Apparently it's a lot because there have been a lot of pre-orders sold. There's like the NZ9, the 8, and the 7. I think I would like to think that the uh, the eight is the highest seller, but as far as I'm aware, I think a lot of NZ nines have been selling like hardcore over the NZ eight, which is weird because it's like twenty five thousand dollars, man. That's like a new car. That's like a new base level trim car. I personally am hoping to get a the the top, the top flight machine, the nine, but. I don't know. We'll see. I have no idea what's going on right now. I mean, I think I think they're talking about something like October, mid October, or something like that for these new JVCs to hit. So I'm kind of, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be one of the first persons or not. Hopefully, I know JVC's been a little iffy, but. The big machine, man, it's just like 3,000 lumens. And then 3,000 lumens for the 9, 2,500 for the 8. And then, uh, what is it? The 7 is uh, 2,000 lumens. I think my NX7 was 1,800 1, lumens. So I think it's a, a 200 lumen bump with the new laser projector. And then from then... 500 500 2500 and then uh 3000 so i mean listen i, I was uh, i was thoroughly happy with 1800 lumens of brightness obviously after you calibrate it and you put the color filter in place it's it's much dimmer than if you put it without the color filter in place and you put it in like bright cinema mode or whatever but i do feel that um i do feel like this this uh this NX9 with the laser light engine is just going to like blow some stuff away. Like I think it's going to be like hardcore good H HDR. Especially over the previous uh, lamp models. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, yeah. I mean, if you had bought a JVC NX9 8.7 NZ, sorry, NZ987, you know, you know, drop drop it down below. I, I would like to know if you got the spare change and you're dropping enough money for these crazy laser projectors. And I think uh, I think there might be a laser project. I don't want to be like presumptuously saying that there's going to be a shootout between Sony JVC, possibly Epson. There might be an Epson uh, 
new projector lineup coming being announced in the next week or two i'm not saying that but there might be but uh there might be a projector shootout coming between jvc sony and epson soon with me and value electronics so i mean hold out for that one i'm pushing for that i know everybody wants to see if, i know people have been wanting to see a shootout with projectors because tv people have been getting shootouts so i'm glad that we got a, a ust projector shootout that happened this uh this past week so i'm hoping that we get i'm hoping that we get a, a an official proper projector shootout 4k 8k with jvc sony and then epson epson being the more budget friendly model i don't know if they're gonna have like an 8k upscaling version or not i don't know if they're they're new i would hope that their new upscaling 4k 4k technology would throw 8 million pixels on screen because right now i think it's something like 3.8 million pixels on screen which they're calling 8k but i think true 8k is 8.3 million and then 8k is like 3.8 or something like that which i think is what epson is doing <clears throat> so uh fingers crossed for that because i would like to see that myself personally like a top flight sony 4k projector against the jvc against whatever epson is going to announce in the next couple of weeks so that's projector news also hold on also projector news speaking of projector shootouts the ust shootout which i don't think i spoke about earlier i think i just talked about the 4k and the 8k shootout the ust projector shootout i don't know what happened with this shootout listen i was there i know people like to bitch and complain about people were paid off to vote for specific products or maybe the manufacturer was at the shootout to vote <laughs> for to, to vote for their product to win or whatever I mean that's not the case as far as I know because I was I was asked asked to be a judge but I turned it down. I was like no I'm not going to be the judge because I, I was shooting the video. I was working the uh, the Black Magic video switcher so I could switch between camera one and two, so you guys could have different different uh, views during the live stream. And I got to watch the levels, make sure people are mic'd up correctly, stuff like that, which people don't appreciate. I get a lot of complaints about the uh, the stream quality. Like if you guys think you can do better streaming live, working mics and cameras and ISOs and um, f stops, listen, you come you come along the next time you do that, all right? Especially with laser light sources, and it's flickering. Anyways, anyways, I thought for whatever man, whatever reason, if you watch that shootout with the UST shootout, I did not think I did not think that high sense won. I'm going to say I thought like the Hisense was like last place for whatever reason that Hisense UST projector was not the winner. It was not the winner of the of the uh, ultra short throw projector shootout. I thought it was either going to be between LG and Samsung. Like if you had seen the stream, the only projector that handled HDR black levels and HDR peak highlights was lg like it didn't crush detail and it didn't blow out highlights so the tone mapping on the lg 85 was legit the best at handling hdr the other projectors couldn't show black level detail especially with the patterns they were just raised blacks across the board for hisense and samsung and then it couldn't show any kind of like white detail highlight detail because it was just blown out either it was crushed or it was blown out the only one that handled it correctly was was lg unfortunately since i mean all three of them were rgb uh tri-laser projectors the way that lg makes their color rgb color is with not rgb but it's like rgbb so it's like red blue blue so I do believe that the, uh, I think, that, listen, I don't know how to mix colors, but I think blue and blue, they used two blue lasers to make green. I'm not an artist, but that's that's the understanding here. 
whereas the other two projectors actually did legit look like more natural as far as like color tone whereas lg was more bluish in tone which made a lot more sense since it, it had like dual blue lasers instead of like an rgb it was like R, rbb which when i had it listen i did the review like a year and a half ago maybe a year ago and i had i had always thought because i had it for like a good solid year I'd always thought the LG projector, the A two eighty five, was slightly skewed on the on the teal side, slightly cooler than anything I've ever seen before. Especially at the shootout, when I when is when you got the high sense on one side, you got the Samsung on the other side, and then the LG was in the middle. It's pretty pretty clear that the LG was bluer, a lot colder looking than the other two, and plus they had calibrated all three of them. The LG was still just like colder than the other than the other th other two. Even when I had it here myself and I try to calibrate the the blue out, like I just could never get the blue out of it. Which was um, <clears throat> unfortunately, unfortunately, maybe maybe that's why I took a hit for like accurate colors and you know stuff like maybe just the accurate colors, but like for HDR, LG definitely fucking won. LG won. Um, as far as like resolution and stuff like that, Hisense, Hisense killed the LG and the Samsung for sure. Like Samsung is the newest one out of the gate. I didn't even like hold a, I didn't even hold a candle to the Hisense. The Hisense was so much cleaner and sharper, and then the LG was definitely for sure softer. Some people might like that because maybe you would get a more kind of a filmic cinematic look out of the LG. But if you're watching like the cartoons, like the CG and all that, the high sense winner, chicken dinner out of all three of them. But um, and then uh, I mean, there's a couple other tests that I felt strongly about. I think it was like the Harry Potter test. The LG won that one. The other two failed miserably. And I mean, except for, except for like color, I really think the LG was like maybe like the better one overall just a hair over the samsung but samsung was really close i feel like samsung could have teetered between samsung and lg for ultra short throw but i mean if we're talking about like 4k material and you want the best shadow detail i mean i think i think you know now I think about it the samsung or the lg would have to be the one to win because you don't want to have gray blacks you don't want to have crushed detail in black levels you're gonna have to put up with a little bit of slightly bluish cast, but I do think, I do think the LG, being as old as is it as it is, the oldest one in the uh, shootout, kind of handled the more important stuff better. And then, of course, you have uh, you know you're gonna have the people that want the best, the brightest projector, the more sharper projector, which which I would have to give to the high sense. So I don't know. Me personally, uh, it would have to be a toss up between the LG and the high sense. I don't know if you guys have seen the shootout. If you guys did see the shootout, leave a comment below. What are your thoughts on the shootout? Who did you think won? Did you think the LG won? Did you think the Samsung won? Did you think the high sense won? Leave a comment down below. Let me know who you think that won. Who won? So that's that's the shootout for uh, UST. <clears throat> and what else? What else did we cover the past month that I've been off? Tomorrow we're gonna I'm gonna be dropping the video for the Michi amplifiers. Um, shout out to. Uh, Shout out to Transylvania. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for all the hard work. Appreciate that, Transylvania. Super chats are welcome. If you want to give a super chat, if you appreciate the work that I do over here and the rest of the fellas do over here on the channel, uh, then please, uh, you know, of course, drop some super chats or sign up for Patreon as well. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to be dropping the... I'm going to be dropping the review for the... Rotel Michi S5 
five in P5 preamp amplifier combo. What a what a beast amplifier. The amplifier throws out 500 watts per channel. 500 watts, like true 500 watts per channel. None of this Denon Morantz, none of this Denon Morantz 180 watts per channel by 24 channels, which dips down to like 24 amps, <laughs> 24 watts per channel. But this is a uh, this is a 500 watts per channel uh, for the for the Michi. So look out for that the Michi amp preamp combo killer 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 audiophile esque um av system <coughs> we use them with the don audio heritage speakers and also uh the kenta threes spoiler alert even though i did think the kenta threes were like obnoxiously harsh and edgy sounding the michi speakers or the michi system kind of just like took that edge just took that edge right away if you're one of those guys that think that speakers and amps and preamps don't mesh together the whole synergy thing whatever that uh you shouldn't mate your your speakers and amps man you don't know what you're talking about like you've been living in a box somewhere but speakers should be paired up with amps for sure proper like because that's uh it's just fact it just works oh wasabi the installer for the super chat thank you thank you brandon uh, I didn't even know you had subscribed to the channel. Thanks, bro. So thanks, Brandon. Super chat. <clears throat> so that's coming. That's coming tomorrow. That's coming tomorrow on the channel. I gotta edit that probably tonight or tomorrow morning after I get off here doing this uh during this chat. If I don't fall asleep first. So Michi, and then probably the day after that, I think the next one we have is a uh, Cambridge Audio Edge M monoblock system the first monoblock system that I had covered on the channel i'm excited i was excited to check it out i'd never heard a monoblock system like in my my cabode in my house i've only heard it at trade shows and uh music rooms and stuff like that because monoblocks always seem to be super expensive so shout out to cambridge for sending me your monoblock system Cambridge Audio Edge M system. I'll leave some links in the video description if you guys want to check that out. Fantastic system. Not overly expensive either. We're talking like $4,000 an amp. <laughs> That's, uh, I'm, not, I'm, sorry, I'm saying like it's not expensive. That's a lot of money. $4,000 per amp for a monoblock. It's $4,000, $4,000. It's $8,000. And then the preamp was like uh, $5,000. So it was like $13,000 altogether for a system. Very nice though. Very, 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 very nice. It's like when you get to a certain point when you review equipment and you're hitting certain dollar amounts, it's tough, man. It's tough to find. It's tough to find faults when you're at X, X dollar amounts. You know what I mean? You know, when that, that uh, diminishing returns comes into play, maybe it's $13,000 because that seemed to be kind of the case because – we were comparing like the uh, the monoblocks against the the Michi system. I mean, one's monoblock, one was uh, just a stereo, all in one stereo amplifier with the LCD display in the front. The uh, very tough man. Like honestly, I don't know if I could tell. If you put me in a blind test, I don't know if I could tell a monoblock system. This system with with an all in one stereo amp it was really tough. It was very tough. That's all I got to say. So be look out on those reviews. It's coming out tomorrow for the Michi. And then the next day or the day after that, probably the Cambridge Audio. And then the day after that, or the next day, day, day after that, two days after the Cambridge, I'm going to do the Yamaha, Yamaha RX A8, RX 8A, RX 8A, which is a... Uh, Yamaha's flagship AVR receiver. Excited to check that out. I've had that in here. I've been sitting in my kitchen for a little bit. So that's going in the home theater. Um, I'm just going to give you a little spoiler on that one. Give you a little spoiler on that because we're like 30 minutes in. I know half of you fools don't stick around past eight minutes, but 
if you have been sticking around 28 minutes into this live stream, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's the whole COVID situation. Is it the COVID situation and getting materials in? But is it hard to get steel in to produce your products? But I, I unboxed. This is like a big spoiler because I feel like this is a spoiler from my video. After you unbox the Yamaha RC8 and you take it out of the box, typically Yamaha AVRs, they are they're a big, robust, aluminum clad AVRs. It's got a oil damped door that you drop down, which you pull it down a little bit and it drops down slowly like it's got a hydraulic lift on it or hydraulic um you know what i'm saying and the door just like drops down really slowly and it's like nicely oiled on the front when you first pull it out of the box and you're just like oh shit there's no scratches on it it's like pristine very nice it's got the nice metallic knob on it previous year's model i'm talking about like the 5200 3080 3060 whatever The really thick, thick, nice quality Yamaha AVRs. I take this one out of the box. I take this one out of the box, and my wife is filming this for me. And um, you take it out of the box, the RXA8, which is $3,000, by the way. And it's made out of plastic. Like, the whole thing is made out of plastic. Except for the the enclosure, which is on the sides, which obviously is like stamped steel. It's a steel. The sidewalls are steel. And I think, I, I believe the sidewalls are steel. And then I, I think it encloses in where you get a stamped steel, vented stamped steel on the top. But the, the covering on the top, I think there's a plastic top frame up top. And there's some some vents up top as well, where it says uh, Aventage in the center of the entire receiver. And then the front fascia typically is where you think of Yamaha as being super high quality as well, you know, build quality wise, which is usually like maybe like a, a few millimeter thick aluminum faceplate. This is plastic, man. This is like, it was like a plastic faceplate. Like, if you took a microfiber cloth and you wiped the faceplate on it, you're going to get all these hairline scratches all across the front of it. And then the knob is like a hollow plastic knob. It's bad. Shit, dude. It's like fucking, it's like cheap, man. It's a, uh, it's kind of a cheap, uh, it's kind of a cheap experience. Like, I was, uh, I was taking it back. I held it back. I don't know if I'm going to cut it out of the video or if I'm going to leave it in the video. But it's in the video, and I was just like, dude, I was like, oh wow, this is plastic. This is uh this is unheard of for a three thousand dollar product. So, like I said, I don't know if maybe if a steel is a hard commodity to come by nowadays for for electronics companies. But the whole thing was just uh man, I was a little bit let down by the build quality. Like if I'm dropping 3k, I want my I want my AVR to be robust and thick i wanted to have a nice i wanted to have a nice build quality i mean you can get like a denon 6700 you can get a mid-level denon marantz with impeccable build quality that's made out of aluminum and steel not plastic this one this one kind of just let me down a little bit that aside build quality doesn't predicate and how good your the av quality is going to be it doesn't predicate how good the device is going to sound it's just like if you're dropping x amount of dollars you kind of want to have a premium feeling product that's like you know you it's like you don't want to drop a hundred thousand you don't want to drop 80 grand on like a honda civic only to jump inside and get like fine corinthian leather like that shit don't kind of make sense, but I mean, I guess if you buy a eighty thousand dollar Honda and it looks like a CRV, but inside maybe you get Corinthian leather, like it makes you feel good inside. Maybe that's okay for you. But I would like, I would like the entire package to be fine. I would like to sit in some Corinthian leather and then, and then have a have a tricked out 
um, exterior as well. This one, man, this Yamaha just didn't do for me. So be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that. This is what, what was that? That was a 40 minute complaint about Yamaha. Uh, I think most of you fuckers are not going to listen to this, but that's Yamaha. That's Yamaha RX A8. I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be more gentle in the review. That's coming up. What else is coming up? Uh, I had some BMW 805 D4s. I don't know if that's coming through or not, but we'll see. I do have going back to the Samsung UST projector, Samsung UST projector, which is the L9s or L9P or something like that. I'm gonna be picking that up tomorrow. That's coming tomorrow. That that review is going to be coming. I don't know if I'm going to pick up the high sense or not. I was going to do like my own mini shootout because I already know what the LG looks like because I lived with it for a year. I might pick up both tomorrow or maybe I'm just going to pick up one, but I'm definitely going to pick up the Samsung. So I'm going to I'm going to review definitely the Samsung tomorrow, the UST. The only kind of a uh, caveat I'm going to say that I didn't like about it was that it, it is white. It's white. How many people want a white projector in front of their in front of their faces beaming beaming a uh, 120, 120 inch image? But that's what's gonna be coming down. Hopefully tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. Well, I'm gonna be getting it tomorrow. I'll say I probably wrap that review from tomorrow. Probably yeah, say something like a like a month from tomorrow. Be on the lookout for that one. And I'm I'm a fan of these UST projectors, man. I, they're awesome. I've been living with USTs for like ever. Um, I keep getting these UST projectors from like, I don't know, like Vava or JM Go, like X Jimmy, LG, Samsung. So it's like I haven't been really watching my 75 inch Sony for the longest time. I've been living with UST projectors. Are UST projectors the LED television replacement. I'm going to have to say for size it is. Like I've been living with a 100 inch in my living room. Even in bright daylight. Not on an ambient light rejecting screen as well, mind you. I'm just living with a UST projector with a gray screen. Do the colors suck on it during the day? Yes, they do. Are the blacks looking more gray than black? Yes, they are. Does everything look washed out? Yes, it does. But at, at the same time, I do have 100 inches in front of my face, and I can make out what I'm looking at. Like, I can make out the edges of people and buildings and objects, and I think that's perfectly acceptable because I don't. I feel like uh, during the daytime, if you don't have the, the, the ALR screen, I think just the size alone just just takes up your field of view it makes you feel a little happy that you got something big in front of your face and um i feel like that's an important thing and if you're a real stickler about image quality then you know turn off the lights or wait till uh, seven o'clock hits and then you can be real stickler about your 4k hdr video quality but if you're going to watch free runs of the sopranos on hbo max before saints of new newer come out i think it's fine what i have i'm on season four by the way I think that's totally fine. Um, do I think it's a TV replacement? Mm, pretty close. I'm going to say UST projectors. Uh, I'm going to say something like 70% there as far as like replacing your television set. Because they are so convenient. They're not really expensive depending on what brand you get. You can get them for like $2,000. $2,000 on up. $6,000 being kind of on the high side. If you're a real rich rich MF, you can get the Sony, which is native 4K. That's something like $20,000. But I think most of the people out there, if you're going to use a UST projector as a television replacement, you're probably looking around two to $2,500, which is something like maybe like a BenQ, JM Go, um, Vava. We're talking about that kind of, that kind of ratio. We're not talking about high sense LG six thousand dollar range either. Shout out to uh, Brian Whisper Status seventy four. What up, man? Yo, what are you doing up so late? 
Brian's uh Brian, me and Brian are gonna go pick up the Samsung. By the way, if you guys are not subscribed to Brian, Whisper Status 74's channel, subscribe to his channel. Also, Brandon's channel as well, being the installer. But uh I think that's it, man. I think that's all I got on the agenda for the rest of the month. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. UST, we did the UST. I got a couple. Oh, I also have, we've got, or I've got the, the Revon. I guess I can, I haven't been, listen, I haven't been really paying attention to what I'm doing right now. But I guess we can uh, do the, drop some screen caps here. I don't even know where my other thing went. I got the Revon UBR. I think it's the UBR 200 or maybe it's the UB 200. I got that 4K player coming up. That's going to be, um, I'm trying to do that next week at some point in time. I think, I think there's been a few reviews out already, right? I don't think, I don't think there's any been, I don't think there's been like a legit review out, but I'm going to try to do like a good review probably next week. Let me see if I can share that screen. Chrome tab, Revon. This is the Revon UBRX 200. I'm going to be, I got that. I've been playing around with that for the past week. This is, I have no idea how much money this is. Let me see. I don't even know if it says on the screen here. I think it's, what is it, like $1,000 or something? Is this 1000 bucks? is available you know you know you know when you have too many products in for review when you don't know how much shit costs <laughs> i have no idea how much this thing costs i think it's like a thousand dollars one of you guys in the chat you guys know how much it costs one of you guys also probably have it in the chat as well so uh you tell me how much it costs you tell me how much uh you tell me how good it is. Because I'm not a clue right now how much it costs. I would assume it's between a thousand and maybe fifteen hundred dollars. So that's that's also coming as well. I'm trying to shoot for that next week too. I feel like I'm I'm putting myself I feel like I'm putting myself into a a busy situation here. Uh definitely, definitely the Michi next week. Definitely Michi probably tomorrow. Cambridge M. Those videos were shot today. We did those both today. Me and Bill did that today. Uh, oh, hold on a second. I got to plug Bill. Bill's got a channel as well. I know I got a few of you guys here tonight, so let me plug Bill's channel. If you guys are um, AV people, some of you guys are into audio, not just movies here tonight. I'm sure you guys have probably watched my speaker and like amplifier reviews but uh if you are interested in subscribing to bill's channel this is bill bill helps me out with my two channel reviews i'm not really sure how i can share this from here mm, but this is bill his name is bill wolcott that's his real name his real name wolcott i'm gonna type it in the chat here Type that in the YouTube search. Let me just copy, paste that right here. He's got uh, 33 subscribers. He put up a little test video today. So uh, subscribe to this man's channel. I'm trying to get him up into the YouTube game so he can, uh, you know, do what he likes to do. Listen to music. Talk about shit. And, uh, you know, do the stuff that I do. Which is like, just hang out, you know what I'm saying? Just hang out, listen to music, have fun, and inform people of stuff like that. So that's that's his channel down. That's his channel right there, right in the, right there, right there in the chat there. So subscribe to Bill. He's at he's at like 33 subscribers right now. He did like a little little thing while, when we were reviewing the Michi. Just a little test video. That's not like nothing like a legit good video, but 
we'll get we're, we're gonna get the wheels moving get some good stuff over there i'm gonna guess i'm gonna guess spot over there probably the next week or so so go over there we'll talk some uh we'll talk some some bull and stuff like that so subscribe to bill bill wolcott subscribe to him over there while i take a sip of my corona while you guys uh hit the subscribe button over on his channel but uh that's it man you'll subscribe to bill and i don't know what kind of questions we got in the chat tonight i can't believe i just rambled on for like 44 minutes but i did let me just remove that <clears throat> who do we got here tonight mm -mm -mm. we got uh we gotta keep up with the joneses bill is the man already subscribed bill be happy to know tristan that you have subscribed yes yes brandon bill's a wild dude he's a wild old dude younger younger acting than you might think he is how much are these revon players by the way did anybody drop the price oh this is my boy john sandoval look john sandoval very rarely makes an appearance he's one of my premier patreon subscribers uh Geno uh john is a uh one of my favorite patreon subscribers by the way he texts me on the regs uh, that's uh on the regular for you young folks you old folks for change.com that means regular um Trying to filibuster here while I'm being up my Patreon page. But this is uh if you guys want to sign up for my Patreon, listen, you guys can sign up for my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, which gives you some some fringe benefits as uh you know access to my Patreon only content feed, news to upcoming videos, etc., which I kind of already gave away today. Um, shout out on my next video. Yo, you got questions. Which I tell you what, 132 Patreon subscribers hit me up on the daily all the time. Quite annoying sometimes because sometimes you just hit me up all the time. But I answer them. And yes, I normally do not respond to anybody's comments in the comment section. Because most of you guys, not you guys right now, kind of a-holes when you leave a-hole comments all the time. That's why I don't answer the questions in my comment section because... There's a lot of a-hole comments in my comment section. So I, I have to distance myself from that. Where, I, as I think, if you join Patreon, if you're dropping a dollar a month, there's a pretty good chance that you might value the content that I put out. And you might be more cordial to me where you're willing enough to pay me a dollar a month, answer questions and pester me, whatever. Listen, if you pay me a dollar a month, you want to... You want to badger me in the comment section on Patreon? Look at more power to you. More power to you. I've not had anybody do that yet, but I'm sure somebody will take me up on that offer. Plus, if you sign up for a dollar a month, AV discounts from Value Electronics. I will broker you a deal with Robert and Value Electronics. If you want to get that next TV set, you want to get that next Z9J, Z9H set, next 4K, A90H 2022 model. Listen, I'll get you a discount on that. You sign up for my Patreon, a dollar a month, $12 a year. If you can't afford $12 a year, you are broke. You should be in a different hobby. But that is a dollar a month. If you want to join up for $5 a month, all the same stuff, except you are eligible for monthly giveaways. That's like movies, digital codes, uh, hardware. If I'm feeling happy that month, I'll give away some hardware. Also, listen, you get discounts, like 50% discounts on the equipment that I review if I decide to sell it on Patreon. 50% off. I believe I sold the JVC NX7 for something like $3,000. Uh, I think NX7s are still going for like seven, dollars $8,000. You could have got yourself an NX7 for like $3,000. That's happened on Patreon as well. And then, of course, $10 a month. If you're a baller, if you got the spare change, $10 a month. You can uh, chit-chat with me one-on-one. -on -one. 
Don't get naked on a camera. I'm not saying this is an OnlyFans type of thing. It's not an OnlyFans. This is professional. You want to ask me questions about your home theater. You want to talk to me like uh, you got some maritable issues and something like that. You got family issues with your kid going to college. You got uh, marriage issues. We could talk about stuff like that. But don't get naked on the camera. That's $10 a month. Not only fans. This is Patreon. AV enthusiast people. You know who you are. You sign up for $10 a month. That's what you get. Plus, you can always hit me up on um, Facebook as well. I'm always, I'm usually always available 24 7. Whether you hit me up on Patreon or if you hit me up on, on Facebook. Once you, once you, once you delete your content from, from Patreon, like you stop paying me that dollar a month, chances are I might delete you from my, pay, from, from, my face, from my Facebook as well. Just, just letting you know, just no surprises. Okay. 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 No surprises. Uh, begging, begging. Get a get a job. Andy Summers is. I'm gonna give let's give Andy Summers a little shout out today. Uh we're gonna give Andy Summers a shout out today. Andy Summers is probably if you are in the AV community. Uh oh, hold on a second. We had a guest. We got a guest. I forgot I got my headphones on. What's up, buddy? You gonna hop on? I sent you the link. I sent you the link. I'm gonna, it's, it's in your it's in your text I know I got something to say about that afterwards we, we're gonna have a uh, guys we're gonna have a industry guest you know what hop on my channel I'm live right now I'll drop it in the chat just click on it just click on it and then I'll let you in invite you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this open to. No, are you on my channel? I'm just gonna drop it in the chat. Yeah, I'm just dropping the chat. Listen, if any of you guys have a, uh, if any of you guys watching the stream right now, you guys want to hop in on video as well, you hop in, you hop in as well. If I think you're you're a butthole, I'll just bounce you from the video. <laughs> oh, there you go, <laughs> there you go. I just I left I left it right on top there. So we got uh, Don Dunn, everybody's favorite, favorite, favorite guest from. Uh... What's up, buddy? What's up, dog? Oh, what's up, man? Yeah. Guest, guest appearance from and not Andy Summers. My bad. Hold on, let me take off his thing. Late night with Shane. I believe Don Dunn doing double duty. So he's getting a. I feel like there's a double duty. A dirty <laughs> joke. A dirty joke. I could feel in here. Oh, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say anything. Diddy. No, I was, uh, that was the first time I hung out with uh, with Joe and Tell, man. He's cool. I like him. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, you got you did a live stream with uh, Joe and Tell? Yeah. Where? You got a channel? Audioholics. Oh, Audioholics. Oh, what would you guys talk about? I'm, I'm going to drop my own channel soon. You're going to love it. <laughs> what would you, what'd you guys talk about? Um, just talk about his, his virtual trade show he's got coming up. He's, he's putting a lot of work into it. Trying to get manufacturers, <clears throat> people to come in, you know, have a little bit of fun, not be so okay. uptight. Had youth man on there hanging out. It was cool. All right. It's like a love fest, man. All right, Jackson. 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 Jesus. So uh, what do you want to talk about tonight? What's happening? Man. What's uh, what's going on in the $1 million dollar uh, home theater world? Hold um, on. Why don't you plug, plug your company? Some of these people don't know who you are. What do you do? Um, I am a custom integrator. We what does that design. mean? Um, we integrate multiple technologies into high-end homes and into high-end businesses. Uh, anything from surveillance and security to distributed audio to complete home automation, lighting control, uh, HVAC control, and my favorite, distributed audio and home theater. Uh, my specialty is designing high-end custom home theaters and media rooms um, You know, from, from the ground up. You said, you said high end. You said high yeah. end. Could the yeah. average could the average folk come to you and get their home theaters? Um, 
let's say under the average 10 person G's. with a good average person with a good job <laughs> that, that i mean yeah no. we're not no, but, you know no. it, it's expensive i mean you know we're 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 not cheap i mean but we we put a lot of tech a lot of work into what we do a lot of design <clears throat> a lot of checking out new technologies learning them learning how they integrate together most of our clients just want to um write it vet a company out write a check then be shown how to hit a button and make stuff happen. Um, but I try to do that at the highest standards possible um, with the highest level of equipment possible, um, especially with these um, Cobuzz and Tidal, Amazon HD, Apple Lossless, really trying to bring high-end audio back because it kind of died for a little bit. And now we're, we're really swinging back in. Um, so, that, I mean, people ask me what I do for a living. I cringe. I like, dude, I just sell TVs. Because it sounds, you know, pretentious to to say all that, but we do some really cool, really cool stuff. In fact, we just won another uh, award for the, in the best custom home theater um, through C, CD and C, CD C Pro, which oh, is kind of like the Academy Award for Best Picture. We didn't win the gold this year; we won the bronze. But just winning any award in that is a big deal. We won the gold in 20, 2019. so we won several awards, and that just lets our clients see what we do and gives them a little bit of confidence for they drop three, $400,000. So the word is around, that's all, the only reason why I asked you what you did for a living was because the word is that you do not get out of bed for less than 200 K. Is this true? No, it's not true. No, I, the bulk of the systems we do are anywhere from 30 grand to 80 grand. I mean, you know, so, and we, it just depends. I mean, I just did a um, really cool retrofit theater, for 38 grand i mean it had a the new sony 325 had and, and i hate to do all in ceiling speakers but we had no choice so i did the focal 300 series the the lcr is an angle and the fronts uh eight inch focals for the atmos and the rears were angled i mean with a with a screen innovations motorized 120 inch screen with a control four run and it was a killer killer little room so i mean it really man it, it just depends i'm a poor dude i live in a normal house with normal people i have <clears throat> pretty exceptional audio but just because i'm in the business but no nah, it's, it's you're on your you're on your little studio stage right now i know what's behind that little room in the closet there okay i know it's in the closet that's your closet i know it's beyond the closet i have the same setup do you think i you think my house looks like this in real life no it doesn't i have a mansion <laughs> you have a mansion <laughs> <laughs> i'm a j fud i want a mansion and a yacht <laughs> no, dude, I just, uh, look, can, I've been I say, can I say that uh, if anybody joins my Patreon, I may be able to broker you a deal with HD 2020 as well. So if you're looking for that full cal sitter channel speaker that everybody seems to be out of stock with, I could I got probably it. get with Don to get yeah. you a good deal on that $4,000 speaker for X amount of dollars off on that MSR retail price. So Yeah, so I'm Roddy, saying, Roddy John's cool, man. Exactly right. He's in the chat as well. Oh, so, is he? Hey, what's up, brother? He, yeah, nah, love that dude, dude. Top Gun, baby. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's a really cool. Like, I would hang out with that dude. He's super cool. So, if you guys sign up for my Patreon, which is a dollar a month, twelve dollars a year, you could save yourself about three thousand eight hundred dollars on your first purchase. No, that's not true. About a thousand, about thousand dollars <laughs> first purchase. You know, give me a heart attack, there, Shane. <laughs> no, no, no. What you done done to me? <laughs> so, uh, date. So, listen, I'm a, I'm a little buzz, so I apologize. Same. I don't really Cheers. What you, what's on tap today? Um, Angel's Envy. There you go. All right. Yeah. A little bourbon. Cheers. Right there. Yeah. You so, a little. Hey, Don to get me an AVM 90. Good luck. <laughs> I have magical powers. So, if, if you guys want to join Patreon, you want to get a little bit closer to the dealer pricing, yo, that we get over here. I'm, I'm not saying you're gonna. I'm not saying you're gonna get dealer pricing for a dollar a month, but I'm saying we'll get you <laughs> pretty close to that. You you what sign a, up and I'll hook you up with some a little bit of discounts. All right. It tells me. So uh, listen, man, <laughs> dude, it's 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 about the love of audio. I mean, I finish my day every day listening to music. You know, I was watching the new. Uh, you well, seen the new Star Wars anime stuff they came well, out with today? Before we start talking about uh, movies oh, and sorry. TV shows, tell all the right. folks what you got in your living room right now. Um, I have. You RBH made you I made have, you made some subwoofers. 
I didn't make subwoofers, you little prick. Those subwoofers, right? you didn't make those, those subwoofers. Were made, those were handcrafted in South Carolina by what? the incredible artisans at RTJ Speakers, or as you know, JTR, but RT, RTJ is the custom integrator line. I haven't um, heard of them. Yes, you have. You're just you're just bitter. Are just bitter. RT is that French? Artesian is French. Hmm? Artesian. Mm -hmm. That's French. Did you, you bought them at Target? Target. Target. Those are Target. All right. So you bought some new subwoofers from Target. They're 18 inches. Four of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, they look like it. Bill quality wise, it looked like it. But yeah, go ahead. You got <laughs> some subwoofers. You got some new subs. They're strong like boo. <laughs> they, got, uh, uh, I'm sorry. How they sound? Um, amazing. Like best sounding 18 inch subs I've ever heard, and and I've owned and heard a lot of them. So, you know, they're they're really great. Uh, all powered by a single amplifier, class D amplifier that's kicking out uh, over 2,000 watts per sub. I mean, you know, just a phenomenal phenomenal setup. I mean, they're they're a little Spartan in appearance. Um, what does that mean? Well, hold on. Elaborate on Spartan appearance. What does that mean? I mean, they're cat. They they look almost like uh, this is commercial late. type subs. Dude, you this know? is late night. You can say what you just say. Nobody, just speak your nobody mind. Late night. I always say what I mean, bitch. Nobody <laughs> puts baby in a corner, right? <laughs> they're 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 designed to go behind screens, right? So okay. if you wanted a really fancy finish, you could pay a lot more money. I mean, that's the bottom line. It takes it's expensive to build. You put um, baby in the corner there. Okay, go ahead. And I've got the R RBH SVTR uh, tower system, not the the full tilt like Gene has. I don't. I'm missing the top module, but I like the way it looks better. Uh -huh. um, so it's um, in the in the eight thirty one matching center or not 831, eight thirty one. Forget the model number. Matching center channel with a uh, dual eights and that big um, giant ribbon tweeter has the surface area. Similar to a five-inch uh, driver, and matching rears on walls and in ceilings for a a five point two point two surround system. Okay, what's five, what, do you, what do you have in your overheads? Uh, RBH. Are they are they mounted? In, are they in the ceilings like actually overhead, or are they kind of like above well, your? Two are a little bit. Two are slightly in front of the listing position overhead. Yeah. And two are slightly behind the listening position, similar to what the Dolby standard is, but you know, uh, symmetrical so they look good. Did you? Uh, how do you feel about? I've been getting a lot of people asking me about Oral 3D. How do you feel about Oral 3D compared to like Dolby upmixing or DTS upmixing? Up mixing? I think some sources sound exceptional, and some sources sound okay. I think if you just do a layout. Because unless you have a perfect room, you just do a, a really good proper Atmos layout and the Aura 3D is going to sound good too. And you can switch back and forth. Yeah. Um, there's not really any content for it, very little content. So, you know, I, I, I just, you know, fail, failure to launch. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. It's great. Pro and in something like your trend off that has exceptional processing, it sounds what? great. Oh. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You hear that? Oh. Dude, I gave you props earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. This guy said something about uh, uh, get the shout out to this guy really quick. He says he says, I want to see Don oh, dance goodness. again. Uh, stay tuned from my fans only page. <laughs> All right, so it seems like you're not sold on the Oro 3D I'm mixing. It's just a gimmick, dude. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's not touch on that anymore. I've I've been getting this uh, nonstop for the past month and a half. People have been telling me to use that. That I've sounds good. I mean, that does. It sounds good in certain situations. Does it? I, does it sound better than a natively recorded Atmos, you know, track or or movie? I mean, what do you think? Um, no. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, when I do a uh, when I do a movie review, you can't you can't review movies with Oromatic. Up mixing, you gotta do it. Aromatic, yeah. aromatic, yeah. No, you know what I like? I like the DTS Pro, X Pro, <clears throat> because if you have more than eleven channels, you can up mix it to like the fourteen or sixteen or more that you have. Yeah. Most people don't have all that, or or can't. They don't have a room that supports it. So, you know, get the best quality speakers that you can, set it up, 
seek out some advice, dial it in, and just be happy with what you're watching and enjoy the enjoy the content. Yep. Uh, Easy HT Texas Shane got the Trino for fifty percent off coupons. If you sign up for Patreon as well, I can save you a few thousand dollars on that Trino purchase if you sign up on Patreon. So if you want to sign up, if you want to spend twelve dollars and save a couple thousand dollars, sign up for Patreon as well. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the question. Your contact reach out to me and I'll beat this deal. You contact me and then I'll contact Don just for you. All right. <laughs> you sign up for Patreon first. Nah. <laughs> uh, nah, it, the system's cool. I mean, you know, in, in the bedroom, I've got a then an eighty five hundred with a full Ocal Canta system. Uh, I don't know how much you love that. It's full, little, yeah. little bright, little bright. All right, so we did the. Uh, I heard you. I heard that part in the in your audio hall extreme tonight. That was the first. I think I. I think I clicked on, right at that part. I was like, I was like, what the hell is that? I don't. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Dude. This guy's got a little Those speakers are not okay. overly bright. You are. Uh, you're smoking some. Correct. You're oh, smoking some. You are smoking something. You mm-hmm. should probably get the sopras in. You once you get the sopras in, you compare them with the. Uh, Dude, you think, think, I've not heard, think I've not heard Sopras in off, your living room? In your li- in your living room? No, not yet. Bam! There you go. So Whatever. once you get them in your living room, the showroom floor doesn't count. Your neighbor's house doesn't count. The dealer showroom doesn't count. It's got to be oh, in your tell room. You that? That's what I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I know. So you that you got to get them in your house, and you then you come back and report back to me, and I'm gonna say I told you so. Professional installer. They they just they don't sound wrong. bright, dude. Why, wrong. why? Why would no, I'm, you're wrong? No, I don't believe that. You're just wrong. I don't believe Where's I'm your lime? Your, you got lime in that? I did. I did mm-hmm. in, the, in the other room, but I didn't bring it here because I felt like it's drying out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, all right. Well, we know your stance on Focal Cantas. You know, little, little I like them. The, aff- like the affordable Focal of the series. So, okay, we get it. The yeah. affordable focal in the series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ten grand, ten grand's a bargain. Did you hear? Uh, did you hear Gene's uh, Dine Audios? Is what Dine Audios? Oh, the one that no, I haven't heard them yet. But I've spent quite a quite a bit of time with Dine Audio speakers. I'm a fan. I like them. I think they're better than the Cantas. Opinions vary, brother. What? I mean, I, I I like their. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not a huge soft tone tweeter guy, so. I mean, I like their powered camera. <clears throat> the model number, their powered towers are amazing. So. Power, okay. Well, I'm talking about the uh, Kenta versus the Heritage specials. Okay. You, you didn't think, uh, trying to get a little debate going on here, but apparently you didn't listen to either one of them in your space. God damn it. <clears throat> I, I, I can't like, have I feel everything like need, in my space like you. I'm not, like not, need to, uh, I'm not the technology hoarder that you are, brother. I feel like I need to reach out to uh, the family Robinson. To uh, the family Robinson, get some. Are you going there? <laughs> really? I feel like really? I feel like to have an intellectual conversation. I need to reach out over there. <laughs> you try to have an intellectual conversation with me. You're reaching. You're hold reaching. on, hold on. Let's let's touch on really quick, really quick. So um, your layout, all right. So you got the uh, you got the dual quadruple quadruple eighteens or dual eighteens? Um, they're four separate eighteens, four separate okay. enclosures. Okay, so you got two on the left side, two on the right side, because I know you sent me the picture for now. But I'm moving two to the back. <clears throat> okay, that's what, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, I found it a little odd that you would put all four up front. It's just temporary. Like, I'm I'm having I'm redoing my whole room, getting ready to paint and do a bunch of stuff. So just got just got a. Uh, New salamander cabinet, which is cool. Yeah, big, big fan of that product. Okay, uh, between you and me, I'm going to mute the mic here. Uh, yeah. Can you give me a discount on salamander furniture? Yes. Bam. Okay, unmute. Uh, so, would you say, as far as a subwoofer replacement, let's say you got two subs or four mm-hmm. subwoofers mm-hmm. to uh, maximize your subwoofer response in your room? Would you put both subs? Because I I'm on these Facebook groups sometimes, and I'll look mm-hmm. at these photos, and they'll they'll put all their subs up front, like next to their TV. Like they'll have 32 inch subwoofers or whatever, mm-hmm. and next to the 32 inch television set. Mm-hmm. And then, would you not separate some of those subwoofers out and put some in the back as well? Why would you Absolutely. put them all in the front? Absolutely. Yeah. I just think it it levels out the base. Um, 
it just spreads it out and makes it sound more even, more uniform in the room. I've always tried to spread my subwoofers out if possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything I sell, I always do two su- at least two subs. <clears throat> Depending, and it's all room dependent, Shane. I mean, listen, we all live in a really real world. If you've got a dedicated room to play with and it's wired properly, then the world's your oyster. But if you live in a family room where you have a spouse or a limited amount of space, you can't always do what's ideal. And that's, that's, so you, you, you put it where you can and you EQ it out the best that you can. I mean, you know, I, I just had this thing with Joe and tell about, you know, like all these automatic calibration systems. I never think I always feel like they're incomplete. I, it, I, I believe that if you hook up a receiver and you just plug the mic in and run it and you think you're done, you you've left about, 20% of the sound on the table. Yep. <clears throat> Period. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So would you, um, all right. So at least minimum when you say, do you feel that, do you feel you can feel a difference? Let's say you got only two subwoofers. You would definitely put one in the front, one in the back. Do you feel there's, if you can, <clears throat> you feel well, that you can... on the room. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 it, there's so many variables to that. Yes. As a general rule, rule of thumb, if you could put one in the front, one in the back, but it doesn't always look symmetrical. It doesn't always look, I mean, two subs is better than none. One sub in the front one. Actually the sidewalls are ideal. Usually if you could put them on the sidewalls, that's better, but more often than not, you can't do that. Where'd you go, Ben? All right. So uh, that's what I had always thought as well. Like if you have at least two subs, put one in the front, one in the back. Cause I always feel like, I don't know if your processor can handle it, whatever processor you might have. Like sometimes you can specify front sub, rear sub. You can kind of redirect base depending on what processor you have. You can redirect, redirect maybe your front stage to a front sub and re- redirect your your back sub, uh, your back speakers to like your back sub. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but I know the Trinov can do it. That's what I do. So you, yeah, can, you can, so you can hear like you know that car coming right up front, just rumbling up front. And then mm-hmm. drive to the back where it travels to the back, and it, that rear sub can pick up certain frequencies. So I feel like if you do have two subs, that maybe a front sub and a rear sub is definitely a positive situation for you if you can make it work. But I feel that you might have think you might think that's the same way though. I, I do, and so, so my system, the, it's a modular tower system. So the bottom consists of two really high end, very high output dual 12s that are ported. And of course my 18s are sealed and I usually don't like to mix and match, but so I'm going to run those subs on that bottom module in stereo base. Then the four subs are part of the LFE. So then we're going to, I have Shane Rich from RBH going to, he's flying in for another project that we have. He's going to help me calibrate it and set it up. So kind of looking forward to that. I mean, having massive amounts of bass, changes the entire system it, it changes the noise floor if even if you had a system for five years and you add massive bass to it it'll sound like a totally different system you've experienced that haven't you shane i have seven subs in my room right now yeah yeah so yeah, those, the question those is little, those cute little rails right those are nice <laughs> so uh, i was gonna get my daughter one you're awesome <laughs> you guys got jokes but for you guys the question is if you guys have subwoofers in your room do you put all your subwoofers up front do you separate them out in your room do you find out what works best for you do you put a subwoofer in the front do you put a subwoofer in the back do you put one in the sidewalls or what is your situation leave a comment down below and let us know all right that's a separate video by the way <laughs> it's a separate video <laughs> we start a new video right now all right, so uh, what was you watched uh, anything cool lately? Are we not talking about media? all right? All right, all right I, like the, I like media, I you know, we can debate kit all we want, but man, dude, it's the media, bro. All right, you let's know? talk about yeah. let's talk about movies. What did you think about Shang-Chi? I haven't seen it yet. Are you uh, your wife is of what nationality, by the way? Japanese, Japanese, mm-hmm. okay, my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm Asian myself, so I mean, me, I feel like me and your girlfriend are, are you? Something- I feel like me and your wife have something in common. I thought you were Mexican. I feel like the fact that you didn't bring your girlfriend to go see Shang Chi is kind of like a, a letdown to the Asian community and your girlfriend as well. I, I will see it. I'm looking forward to. It. I'm just really busy, dude. Really, 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 really busy. I feel like maybe so, you don't. I feel like maybe you don't love your girlfriend enough to just be like listen. I'm going to separate three hours of my life 
take you to go see this uh, Asian representative movie in Hollywood, which is the first biggest Asian comic book action movie that there is. Which Wakanda is, uh, forever. <laughs> you making it? You making it a thing? But I feel like you should. You should have. Well, I don't really. I don't really movie. look at it with this ethnic thing. And this looks like a cool movie, dude. I don't differentiate because it's Asian. I mean. You know, I mean, evidently you do, but I don't. I mean, I do. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to represent my uh, my people. Yeah, but they're Chinese, aren't they? Aren't you like Thai? Thai curious. I feel like our people are all Asian, so it should be like <laughs> all a community, an Asian like, community, like Asian or Pan Asian, like Indians are Asian, Russians are Asian, right? That as well. All of us should just right. meld together, just like I the Black agree. Panther community. Uh, I got the Shang Chi community as well. I got no <laughs> opinion on nothing. I'm a white dude, so you know, I'm cutting this part out of the view. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right, no, it's fine. Nobody's saying nothing wrong. Right, dude, uh, look, yeah, I really want to see that movie. So, I speaking of Asian, I just watched this new Star Wars um, anime stuff that that they brought out, and I thought it was pretty kick ass. Which one? It. The, it's like there's multiple. There's several little little shorts. You know, animes. Um, I've I've got about halfway through it. So, what was you know, it? I'm, I'm so not. I, if I should see it. it. You know, they're it's coming cool. out with the Obi Obi Wan show, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, when, Hayden, when's that coming out? When? Hayden Hayden. I heard Hayden Christensen is going to be in it. He played yeah, Darth Vader. Like a cameo as Vader. Yeah, I saw that too. So Amazing. yeah, I follow okay. the geek chat. So. I'm excited for that. Uh, I would. I think the last movie he did was Jumper. That was good. You remember yeah. Jumper? Yeah, I remember Jumper. Unfortunately, that was a, that was yeah. a good movie. Yeah. Well, you know he, like he's just like he's like a little bitch, dude. Like, like Jumper. they they should have got. Oh, did I ruin your monetizing? Sorry. Can I not curse? Because that's really hard for me. I dropped a couple of f bombs earlier. You're Honest good. people, dude, curse. You always know where you stand with me, dude. Um, I am trying to. <laughs> He's, he's HT tag. I am trying to work the line. Um, yeah, he's he's. I think he's terrible. I think he needs to go oh away. Oh my goodness! What he was good in Jumper, man. <laughs> You're the bomb in <laughs> Phantoms, man. You're the bomb. He was good in Jumper. I like Jumper. Yeah, uh, I think that, right. that was a good concept. I mean, I forgot what it was about, but I think he, like he was jumping from different parts of the room. Yeah, in space. I don't know what happened to That's him, cool, man. man. Maybe How, Hollywood is fickle. Hollywood is fickle. So I'm just uh, waiting for some more content to come out, man. I feel like I've watched everything. What do you Great. feel as good that has dropped in the past year, especially like HBO Max? Wait, do you even subscribe to HBO Max? I do. I have them all. Okay. Yeah. What have you yeah, seen there? I, I mean, that sparked your that sparked your interest this year. What has been like good? Because I feel like maybe there's only been what's like the one, one or two. with um, what's his name, Chris, whatever the Chris Pratt. The, the the one where he went into the future. I know you didn't like that. But oh no, I like that movie. Tomorrow I, War. I that movie was, yeah, I thought that was killer. I like the premise. Yeah, you know, awesome. a lot of people dogged it. I, I liked it, man. I listen. If you can't just watch a movie and enjoy it, yeah. If you're just gonna pick apart, be hypercritical of everything, unless something's really annoying you, dude, you, it, it must suck to to live like that. You know what I mean? Like I like sitting and watching surround sound. I like zombies and aliens and. And I, I just enjoy it, man. I, I'm a little kid then from that aspect. So, um, you know, I, I like music, man. Oh, Dune, yeah. Dune. So being a big sci-fi guy, when I was in um, freshman in high school, I read Dune. And it was like life-changing, man, because it was just like this crazy. It's you like Lawrence book? Arabia space opera. You actually read it? Oh, yeah. A couple times, dude. In fact, I just, uh, on Audible, I, I do about one or two books a week. The version on Audible is awesome. They have like four or five narrators, and they've got music and sound. It's really cool. I mean, it's a classic. Yeah, the Hugh Jackman movie on HBO Max. You like that? Oh God. Oh my! You like yeah, that? I hated it. I didn't like it at that all. That was the I worst, think. most predictable movie I'd seen. I thought that fought. chick was hot such as a long, long time. time. But yeah, but I didn't like it at all. I was that was a big. Was that movie the Big Showman reunion? It was like him in that. In that kind of yeah. Redhead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't yeah, get me wrong. She's hot. She's definitely. Like, she's hot. she's, she's rad, dude. Like yeah, smoke show for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that movie was so. Fuck, gosh, it was just bad. I forgot about that movie until you just brought it up. Like yeah, I thought it was just so predictably bad. Maybe it was like it was kind of like Blade Runner esque feel, you know? Yeah, 
but just not good. It was it was like it was like the notebook in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Which the notebook I like actually. I just watched that Clint Eastwood movie that he did. Um, yeah, was back. Yeah. That yeah, was, was pretty back. cool. God, he's old, dude. You Cold thought that was good? I, I mean, it was enjoyable, dude. I mean, you thought yeah, that was enjoyable? It was. You didn't like it? I feel like I'm taking your movie card away. All right. So, are you just saying that because it's Clint Eastwood and he's old, and you're giving him some respect? No, I just I thought I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm comfortable you, enough with my manhood to enjoy it. You, you didn't, know, you didn't, think, that, you didn't think that was a B level movie? I mean, you know, it wasn't Flags of Our Fathers or Grand Torino or you know some of the other stuff he's done, but it wasn't bad. I mean, at this point, dude, it's you know, it's like you'll take the fat chick at four in the morning now. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. get what you can. You know. All so right, so when he knocked out the when he punched the guy in the face and he kind of like stumbled back, when he got on top of the horse and was rodeo riding at ninety one years old, <laughs> when old, the highly attractive Hispanic. older Hispanic woman she was, was hitting I, on him, yeah, she was you, I, the whole time. You're going, can he get it up? <laughs> I, that's, I thought he was. I thought he was going to say that because yeah, he was thought, at the bed. I was like, oh, he's going to drop the line. She's gonna break, I she gonna break his up. hip or something. She's <laughs> gonna break his hip or something. I mean, yeah, it was all right. I mean, they take what you could get anymore. Literally, I feel like I've seen everything worth seeing. I mean, I'm even watch. So we went on this kick watching horror movies, man. Going back and watching a bunch of horror movies, and they even got old to that. So I'm you know, Hollywood needs to step their game up, man. Uh, you saw Suicide Squad, right? That was good. I that I, I think that was one of the best movies I saw this year. So it was far. pretty cool. I, yeah. I was actually because the the I thought the original was good. I thought Birds of Prey was an abortion. Yeah, that's um, but, that but well. yeah, the Suicide Squad was interesting. That was, that was cool. good. I, you yeah. know what's the uh, superhero show on? Um, the boy, the boy, no, the boy. Well, I saw that. That was great. The boys yeah. on. Um, yeah, that, that didn't that's come out a killer year. show. I didn't, they didn't come out this year, though. That doesn't count. Yeah. They don't do Stranger Things. They don't do Ozarks. Come on, man. They're killing me. Uh, Black Widow. Black Widow? Um, I mean, she could sit in a chair and look at me for two hours. I'd probably like it. I mean, I'm, you know, I, but yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't up to the full Marvel quality that you're coming to expect. But, you know, what'd you think? Yeah, bad, horrible. Horrible? Bore. It was horrible. No, it was just boring. Yeah, it was. It you got to watch it. You got to watch it in 3D, though. Like I, oh. I watched the first time I watched it, I woke up at like 12 01 in the morning to watch it. Uh, bad. I watched it a second time with the wife. She was bored. I was bored. Um, I watched it when it came out in 4K Blu ray, which was a couple days ago. Uh, bored. I watched it on 3D. 3D is the way to do it. Really? That's cool. Yeah, I was the four so times. Somebody talked about the Justice League, Zack Snyder. When I saw that shit in four three, I'm like, wow, dude, really, oh, yeah, really. Uh, I like, I like, I like. I really they just like can't get Zach it right, Snyder. dude. They can't. They DC just can't well, get it right, dude. All right, other than the first Wonder Woman. I like now that. that. Well, now that we're talking about four three, and you're a custom installer, have you ever installed an IMAX sized aspect ratio type of screen where you can go four three? And then six nine sixteen nine, and then two four. Not, not in the scale that would really. I mean, I I think the biggest sixty nine or excuse me two three five to one screen I've done was one hundred and fifty eight diagonal, and it was in a pretty good size room. But it, it was it was a few years ago when we did that one. But could you do it, all right room? This is this is my idea. Like if you could do this, if you've got the space. Could you do a four by screen, four by three screen? Like you take up the entire front wall. I, I don't know how many feet that would have. Well, to be, you but. so when I, I mean, I've been in this game a long time. So I was doing kind of my go to system. And back in like 97, uh, 98 was uh, a Sony, something 50 in the model number. It was, a, it was a three CRT projector, right? And we used to do giant four by three screens and do M and K. Uh, THX surrounds with ADA components, ADA preamp, ADA amplifier. And those were huge. I mean, they were monstrous. We did like, um, you know, 200 inch screens, four by three, which was huge if we had the right room. So 
which was really cool. I remember watching a U2 concert on Laserdisc on one of those that sells high old man. That was really cool. You just have the right room, man. And, you know, um, we're doing a really big theater right now. We're going to do a micro LED on it that's 16 foot by 9 foot. So it's literally a 16 by 9 or um, 178 to 1 or whatever format. But we're um, but just you have to have the right room. And most houses don't have a room big enough to support that, brother. You know? Because I know I know people like to do like the auto masking thing where it's like uh, four by three and then you mask it. It goes to 60 by nine and then you mask it again. It goes to two four L. It opens up again a little bit. We um, but but the thing is, if you're going to do masking, you're getting smaller every time you mask. You are. I think the idea would be. If you got the funds. You take that entire front wall, you get. Two, you double stack your projectors mm -hmm. you make a screen four by three let's say you got a four by three wall right mm -hmm. that that type of aspect ratio the entire wall takes up to four by three mm -hmm. and then you get a mask again you can shut off that second projector you go to 16 by nine aspect ratio but you're still big because you've got big enough screen to support it what you're saying yeah but yeah because you're getting the whole height uh up and down vertically but then you're taking the circumference of the wall left and right, maybe with your, your second projector. Mm -hmm. Well, you're taking the second projector because you got to light up the bigger four by three screen. You're just then, you're talking the whole wall, the entire wall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's possible. And then you do the uh, the second one, which is 16 by 9. Then you can mask it again to get 240. But you have to take up the entire width of the wall, the entire height of the wall. You um you familiar with the Lumigen processors? Yeah. We, we do quite a bit of those when we're doing, usually doing when we're doing a you know, 235 or 240 to 1 ratio screen. Um, I like the Lumigen. It does really good scaling on it. I mean, we like to do anamorphic lenses too whenever the budget's there. It's just, you know, it's all about the budget, dude. You know what I mean? But you understand what I'm saying, though. Like, I, do. I think no, I completely you do, understand you do 133 mm -hmm. and then 185 and then. 2.4. 2.4. Which you would have to have to enjoy the scale of IMAX. You yeah, would, would have, have to. Have to. Badass project or dual stack projectors. Which, dual stack, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dual stack projectors is not an easy task. We used to do uh, Vitacrons and Sony's back in the day, dual stacks. We put them down low in the seating area. Um, and, and, and just to get the brightness, I mean, the, the projectors now are so exponentially brighter. Yeah. Than what we did with the CRTs back in the day. Because I know the JVCs have that that section in the installation where the, you can do grids or double stacked or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I know you can do that. So why have you not done that? Why haven't why has nobody done that? I would do that. Budget. Most people have to pay for their gear. So when you do, <laughs> it's really hard to extract the money from okay, them. Okay. Okay. Well, come on. Not somebody. You. No, are you going to tell me nobody's nobody has taken what I just told you? Four by three, 16 by nine, 240. You got to have the right dude. You got to have a huge room to do that, bro. You know, like I, I'm sure somebody's done. There's always somebody that's done it. You know, I mean, my point of reference, I haven't seen it. Not in that scale. I, I think an IMAX setup would be rad. You know what I mean? Really, I know doing you, can, it. you can buy those private IMAX room setups. You know, I think I think you can buy those IMAX setups. Yeah, Where, where's your this headphones? Bad money. Where's, where's your headphones, by the way? It's uh, um, you, you getting interference or something? I think they start at five hundred k for an IMAX private IMAX. Really expensive. They even have IMAX speakers you can get. I know. Uh, I think it. I think when you piece it together, it's like a JBL synthesis or something like that. So I'm. I'm actually reviewing a pair of IMAX rated speakers right now. The D, the DevTech D17s. Oh well, hold on. Are you talking about like IMAX enhanced? I am. Yeah, the little. Okay. Stuff. Okay. So you're not like yeah, IMAX. No, we're not talking about full tilt IMAX. I mean, I'm sure I'll be doing something in the near future like that. Depends on the client. It really does. It depends on the structure, how big of a room can support it. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I think, listen, I don't think anybody's talked about my idea enough where it's like mainstream idea. I think if we talked about it enough, you will get somebody that's like, Rob, I want a double Rob stack. Hahn Theater, Rob Hahn Theater did it. 
So that's cool. Oh, did he do it? I feel like I've seen the video, but I don't I didn't I don't think he did like a four by three screen. I mean I could be wrong, but I don't think so because I would have remembered it. Yeah, but, it's but, the, he, it, he's right. Height is the real yeah. the real kicker. I mean, you're talking 20, 20 plus foot ceilings to really to do that properly. Uh, well, I don't think I just think you just got to take the whole height of your room. If if if, if in, even if it's like an eight foot high screen or a twelve foot high screen or higher, mm -hmm. just as long as you have the entire height of that front wall, that's going to really take up your your field of view. I mean, you have to have the client that sees the value in doing something like that. You know what I mean? There's plenty. We're all, we, we, is there's, there? there's plenty. They just don't know how to do it. That's what I'm talking about right now. Okay. I do this for a living. Yeah. It's not funny that want to do that or have the structure to do it. We could do anything. If it could be done, we can do it. We're doing. Well, because well, they don't know. About. Stuff I can't talk about IMAX right is a, IMAX is a bigger thing right now. Like it, when is you it? started, when you started back in 1963, uh, IMAX wasn't a thing. Now it's a, uh, <laughs> now it's a thing. And now we're getting movies with Christopher Nolan. We're getting the Marvel movies. We're getting uh, documentaries. IMAX is an aspect ratio that people long for. And I think if you can double stack projector, <laughs> you can go vertical four by three. That many people. I mean, dude, when I do a, a 200 inch 16 by nine screen, people are like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because they haven't seen, they haven't seen that. Because when they blow up the IMAX, yeah. like, a, a, like a, a Snyder movie, to be honest, I think he might be the only one that has that aspect ratio for IMAX. Well, so, yeah. uh, so, I mean, if they got the the option to do it, it's like a no cost type of thing. And you were like, "Listen, there's a couple movies out there that can do four by three, mm -hmm. or if you want, even want to go to the classics, okay. you can go to the what, classics." What, what's the Batman movie with Heath Ledger, uh, The Dark Knight? The Dark Knight. Yeah, that yeah. vacillated yeah. between the two formats, right? Yeah. Which or really Transformers, uh, Night Knights of the Round Table, or something like that. That switches between like four different aspect ratios within sixty seconds. Like stuff so like Mr. that, Mr. Client. I want to propose doing a $2.2 million theater for you, and there's like five movies that really take advantage of it. I well, I did I did a list of IMAX movies, and we can only come up with 10. That was 10? last year, okay. yeah, 10. Oh, yeah, 10. Okay, <laughs> but uh, right. you know, what I'm you, saying, that. yeah, dude, I would, listen, if all the people you know, I you know, I would make that happen, it's just a matter of having the budget and the right kind of client to do it, man. So, listen, you, listen, you got a million dollar. You got a million dollar client right there at your house. I think if you were just like, listen, there's a couple of different aspect ratios. You're going to take two projectors to make this happen. And you show that one clip of Zack Snyder and he's like, God damn, that's fucking amazing. And this is IMAX right. in my house. He would just be blown away. Then he would just be like, he would realize that. You, the, we're going to show it to him at, dude. You know what I mean? Nobody's <laughs> going to get the money to build that showroom. All right. So in this room, we need 26 foot ceilings. I mean, dude, that would be Whoa. rad. You're well, talking. About, all right, listen. You're talking about 20, 26 foot ceilings. You can make it do. I. You can make it do it. You could do it in like a, a twelve foot ceiling because even yeah, from floor to ceiling, it's not the same. Well, it's not the same, but in the grand scheme of things, if you saw an image that was twelve foot tall and then Dude, twelve foot wide, you would be fucking like, wow, that's way better than the sixteen by nine. Oh, that's cool. You're theoretical, and I'm realistic. You know, yeah, this. The, when you're doing these kind of homes and projects, you're limited from the designer, the seating. I feel, like you're, I feel like right now you're limited by your vision. Oh, no, I'm not limited by my vision. I have excellent vision. <laughs> Too many. No, I'm, I'm telling you, one day we'll, we'll do something like that. I think there's going to be um, some revolutions in technology in the next five years as for the home cinema and speaker market. On the video I'm telling you these micro LEDs, dude. If you haven't experienced one, which you probably haven't, they're well, here, all right. So here's the thing, too. Let's say micro LEDs. And we can build we can we could build a whole wall with micro LEDs. Exactly. But whatever there it is. format you want on it. Yeah. As so as you, you gotta save room for audio. So uh, you well, play through it. Yeah. You know, that out of the way. Let's say you got that 12 foot tall ceiling. You got a 12 foot wide wall. 12 mm -hmm. foot, it's like 12 foot high, 12 foot wide. Now you're taking those squares, you're putting it in mini LED wall. The entire wall is mini LED. 
Now, when you're watching Zack Snyder's Justice League, it's filling the entire wall because it's four by three. Yeah. It's, it's a square. Yeah. Yeah. And then now when you're watching 16 by nine, it automatically scales to 16 by nine. Then you're watching and it goes from wall to side to side. And then you go to 240, it goes from side to side. So you got you're not scaling so, with a lumen gin, you're not scaling with anything. Right. It just well, scales you know, automatically. I, and, yeah. and you got then you got all the nits too. You know, yeah. you're at eleven to, to 1400 nits versus so, two hundred and fifty. Unless you use a commercial projector that with that much bright I mean, it's just it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. There's there's projectors that'll just they'll burn you when you put your hand in front of it. I'm I'm kidding, but super powerful, but you know. The more power, the more light you have output, the, the more you got to deal with picture quality. You know, the more you have to deal. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a vicious cycle, but it's coming though. It's so a, a a said 16 it's foot by nine foot micro LED yeah. is around $250,000. And it uses today. Uh, t- well, today, today and yesterday it was $350,000. So we've done streams on it and talked about it. Yep. So in, in five, so right now you could do like a, I was told you could do about a 120 inch micro LED for about 60 grand, but you're, you're, you're in 1080p land. You, you, you can't get that small yet with the full 4k capability. It's above my pay grade to explain it, but it's, it's, it's coming. So, I mean, in the future we're going to, and, and there's other technologies on the horizon, you know, they're talking about, it's just implementing it. I mean, I've sold a couple of the Sony or we have a couple of the hundred inch Sony's. Those are stunning. Those are literally like the picture quality of a 55 and a hundred inch. They're crazy. The, uh, 92s, 92 J's. No, hundred inch. Oh, then, oh, sorry. Yeah. The 92 J's. Yeah. yeah. But they're 20, they're 20 grand. Yeah. 20 G's. But oh, you sold them already. Okay. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. 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 I've got one. Um, I'll, I'll send you the case study of the, we just, and that award we just won the best custom home we did in the family room. And, and I said, it's a hundred inch TV and nobody believed me because the wall was so big. That guy could have did an IMAX, but he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Cause we're lucky to get that TV in. But, you know, people are like, that's a, that's a no bigger than a 75. So I had to take a picture with my big ass next to it. And they're like, oh, sorry. You know? Yeah. I heard it tell them in the picture if you don't have a reference point. A in point there. Yeah. Point a reference on it. So okay. yeah, it, that new Sony dude is a kick ass TV. It really is nice. But, all right. It takes like four um, people to hang it though. Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't be a pain. They have to hang it. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, I'm saying though, I'm saying to get that entire circumference of your entire wall. I think it's a thing. I don't know why you haven't pushed it yet. If I was one of your sales guys, you would get a sale from me. We don't do have that. sales people. We have system designers and technology oh, advocates. Oh, sorry. If you had an influencer that was just like, listen, you need to get two of these JVC projectors. We're going to double stack them. Mm-hmm. Or I'm going to sell you some micro LEDs. I, dude, somebody's willing to write the check. I'll make it happen. Okay. I'm just saying. That's an, that's the idea that I had for my own room. Once really, I get really, really rich people get rich by not spending all their money. You know what I mean? That, that's oh, yeah. just the reality. Listen, we got Justin Bieber's out there. We got Dwayne The Rock Johnson's out there that are just like Justin Bieber's. <laughs> okay. Now, listen, I'm sure somebody in LA or California is plotting that out right now, or or maybe even in Miami. You know, there's some heavy hitters doing some cool stuff, and there's systems out there you don't see because the people are very private. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, the guys I've that did Jeter's system. They they were streaming and they had that technology to stream in first run movies. Um, That's when it, when uh, it, what is that yeah, called? I I've yeah. saw I, I've seen uh, Peter now Jackson. It's Max, but <laughs> no, it's it's like something. We're, I was talking about the other day with one of the installers. I got another guy, another installer over in Australia. There, they're uh, part of this Dane date release for cinemas, which is like No Time to Die and all that stuff. I think it's like fifteen hundred a movie or something like that, and it downloads into a hard drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they got that shit, and, and, and um, a limited time you can watch it too. Yeah, I did. No, he said uh, I don't think changed it or not, but I think you can keep it. I think you can keep it until I think it used to be twenty four hours, but I think it might be a little bit longer now. Yeah, but I think it used to be twenty four hours. I think it was don't called have- Red Carpet Cinema. Yeah, there's a couple different versions oh, of it. Oh, it's Bel Air. It's Bel Air or yeah, something. Have your own, something. had its own proprietary satellite dish. Yeah, 
yep. to, to beam it in, which is crazy. Did, don't you have a Clyde Escape on your system? Am I? I'm not douchey. You don't have a Clyde Escape. I thought you had a Clyde Escape. Only rich, only rich guys have Clyde Escapes. But you've got a trend off. You're going to talk about that being expensive, really? All right. Yes, I do have a Clyde Escape. What are you trying to say? Clyde Escape's the bomb. I do have one. I, I bought one. It's one of my favorite products in all of AV. I bought. Uh, I do. You know, I did the review on it. Uh, you can type in Cloud Escape review. I'm the only one there. Uh, I did the review on it, and I tell you what, people don't believe me when I say it, but it is like Full the smoothest audio. Yeah, it's like the smoothest uh, UI. Super quick to find your movies. It's like the oh, coolest. Their, their UI has always been. I mean, yeah. years. I mean, it's still pricey, but it's not as pricey. I mean, I was doing those things in 2005 for. 35 yeah. 40 grand dude that kaleidoscape system f the best audio you can get man yeah better than a blu-ray fully uncompressed in all channels dude like it's killer product man i love it reliable um you know i'm, I'm glad they survived and they're doing well now oh yeah what do you you know what do you know about the whole uh did they go out of business more than once this is the, this really is the biggest it. thing. This is the they biggest thing. On the, they teetered on the edge. They just, they, they changed hands a few times because they got they got sued like real bad on the content and pulling the metadata down. I mean they they were trendsetters on it, but yeah. you know they're they're back and yeah it's expensive. It, there's no doubt, but I mean it, what we're talking about Trenov and this and that you're in yeah. high roller stuff, but I don't think there's a better media experience currently available than collide escape well hold on all right so this is the thing though would you be afraid that they're going to go out of business again that's no. that's in the, that's the first thing i always hear on, they've been on the conversation they've been around long enough now that 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 think they're good i don't think they're they're going out i mean they've worked out all the deals with the studios you know it they're 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 around to stay I wouldn't be afraid to, to get one. In fact, I'm going to try to put one on my system here in the near future just because it's such a cool setup. I just, I'd love the video presentation and the yeah. sound quality. It's great. I I just feel like it's, I feel like that's, uh, that's one of the products that you buy after. That's the, one of the last things that you buy for your home theater. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, depends on your budget, dude. It's all you, it's all relative. You guys are not hitting him up with enough questions because he's he's oh, yawning I'm, over here. I'm tired, dude. <laughs> I, I've been up. I've been in this chair since seven a.m., dude. Working on proposals and system designs and answering phone calls and yada yada yada. So, apologize. Not four by three. Plus, where my speech? You know, not had four, about four bourbons. So. You're not doing four by three IMAX designs. That's for sure. <laughs> non non visionary over there. You're like a. You're like a missile that locked on you won't let go like a pit bull like a snapping turtle so guys get the get the collide escape i'm a big fan plus they get their they get their 4k movies like sometimes a month ahead of time before it hits yeah, no. media yeah yeah it's 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 kind of an exclusive club once you subscribe and get with yeah. it it's not as expensive as it used to be i mean you used to spend it depends on the clients and whatever you have but this is just for one room i you know it's not that bad it really isn't i mean if you're a true video file and audio file but what do you think about the sound of the cloud escape versus other sources uh honestly it's uh, fucking sounds like a 4k blue <laughs> it sounds like a 4k blue i mean it doesn't sound like a stream for sure Sounds better than a stream, but I'm gonna say it's just as good as a 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like no less. They claim it's superior. Yeah, I mean, I always think it's harder to tell if you're doing a multi-channel instead of a two-channel because you got all the other channels like mixing in together, so it's hard to decipher what's crystal clear and what's not. Right, I think right. If you if you were just to sit there and listen to two-channel, you could you could tell if it's better or not, but. uh Harder to tell if it's like you got 16 or 20, 32 channels in your room. What's Although, your favorite? What's your favorite streaming service for audio? What's your preferred one? Oh, for like music? Yeah. Yeah. That thing. I mean, I use, uh, I use either, I mean, I, I'm only on Tidal or Cool Buzz. I'm just using those two right now. Mm -hmm. And then you if I'm on the check TV, out Amazon HD, man. Yeah, I heard about that. Not too long. I've heard about that recently. I was like, I think they stream at like three something, three, 
eighty four and three ninety six or something. Yeah, like it's it's actually really good. So I, I have four of them. I go by as, well, you know, as influencers, we get you know access to it, and except for Amazon, they don't they don't they don't play that with nobody. But it's really good. I think it's probably the best sounding. I just don't particularly like the menu. Title still has a, the title for best. Okay. You know, I'm not picking sources. <laughs> so Buzz, I like, I like a lot, but man, this Amazon's really kick ass. And I like it when you were like, uh, I get free service for influencers. <laughs> well, I mean, I sell it. <laughs> I, I've got, I've, I've gotten more business for Cobuzz and Title than you can shake a stick at because I get all my <laughs> clients to sign up. I got no skin in that game. I don't make a penny from it, but I'm like, dude, you got to use a, uh, you got to use Rune. I have Rune. Oh, you got Rune's awesome. I oh, fucking I love Rune. Rune. Rune is Rune. Like, yo, uh, we did a live stream with the uh, the Rune guys. The new version is super cool. Uh, if you guys they're, haven't they're, done, they're good people, man. Do you? Yeah, do you have the Rune nice. processor, or do you go through a PC? I go through the PC. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. What? What is uh, the Trenov Rune compatible as an endpoint? It is, but I don't listen to music in my theater. Oh, you don't? Okay. I like to be a purist. I like to only keep it the two channel. I just mosey over to my two channel room and out of my theater. And <laughs> I go over here. I take five steps and go to my living room. <laughs> so, dude, you know what I got? I just got uh, a few days ago is these uh, prototype RBH studio monitors, uh, part of their new Unrivaled series. Um, and they have the uh, in, one and a half inch uh, AMT tweeter and the, the um, six and a half inch, you know, mid mid bass driver. And for, for 400 what? watts total, it's a studio monitor. It, it, oh, okay. Like what brand? R, I just said RBH. I was I was reading this guy's statement. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hold on. okay. Hold on. Hold on. Finish your finish your thought. What'd you say? What were you saying? It's a good speaker, dude. It's it's amazing speaker. I'm gonna cut you I'm off. Gonna go. I'm gonna cut you oh. off because RBH never sent me anything. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna disregard RBH right now. Uh, you can send them this portion. They of the don't screen. have. They're waiting on drivers like everybody else did. <laughs> not because you're Asian. I've like, been hitting them up for the. I've like, been hitting. You're up a white boy. You get all the RBH stuff. I'm like, dude, come on. Really? Well, you know, I mean, you're a white boy. You know, I mean, you're gonna play that. Let's not. Uh, let's not get it twisted here. You are a white boy. I'm a yellow boy. Okay. It's your white as I am. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm, a yellow, yellow, yellow I'm a yellow boy. I'm curry flavored. You're a uh, vanilla. <laughs> my my Japanese girlfriend and she's their skin's whiter than mine. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm yellow rice, you're white rice. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Croson. Not here. Croson, uh, Croson says, uh, but Kaleidoscape, mm -hmm. you know, I've been saying Kaleidoscape for so long. Kaleidoscope doesn't even make sense anymore. Oh. You know where that is? Like the kaleidoscope is the real word because it's like the tube with the, with the you know like a mix of different colors and shit like that. But it, I'm so used to saying kaleidoscape, I just think it's kaleidoscape now. Yeah. Uh, but kaleidoscape only states larger files, not better audio or video. Uh, they claim better, but never get specific, and they do state more metadata. But does more meta? Does more data mean better if it's unused features? Well, here's the thing. If you are using less compressed data to uh, compress your files down, let's say let's say the movie is 100. Let's say you got Endgame, which on the disc, I believe, is only 66 gigs, whereas right. the Cladescape version is 120 gigs. Mm -hmm. If you're using less compression, that means you're compressing it less. So you, you basically almost have twice the amount of data, which is less compression, less banding, less um, uh, artifacts in your video presentation, less yeah. you're compressing the audio as well, even though the audio would be almost would be exactly the same as a physical disc. So I believe it would be more because it's it's uncompressed audio for both the physical and kaleidoscape. So if you have less compression on the video, your video hence would be better on the kaleidoscape. Unless you have a really shitty compression well, person, well, it, it, and it depends on the level of gear you got. I mean, when I'm talking to my clients, I always have to use these analogies. I'm like, so you know, this product will go 200 miles an hour. This one will go 100, but you're usually only going zero to 60 or zero to 80. You know, what's more fun? 
the, the Porsche that goes 200 is more fun. You know, it's it just having that dynamic range and that amount of data coming yeah. in. I mean, can you hear the difference or differentiate? That depends on the, each person's well, ear. You can definitely see the difference if you compare. Yeah. I, yeah. I know this. I the know video this because it's real. I, yeah. I, I, I would concur that for sure. I, I, I would say this as being a YouTube person, and maybe Don will know soon because he got some real good cameras. But I will say that oh, I can take. I, I could say if I'm shooting on my camera, which is a Sony FX3, and if I shoot on the camera, I can shoot in RAW, which is uncompressed, or ProRes, or if I shoot in MP4, I can choose the compression. I can choose to compress it down as an MP4 file or MOV, or I can choose to do RAW files. Is there a big difference between the two? Um, there's a little bit of difference between RAW an MP4 with this particular camera, but once you bring it into Premiere and you compress it down from like say 60 gigs down to one gig, there's a drastic difference. Or if I compress it from 60 gigs to five difference, there's an even bigger difference. So same applies to what they're doing in the cloud escape. So if they're going from 120 gig file from Endgame, or if they're going to a 66 gig file on the physical media, there is a difference between the 120 on Cladescape and the uh, the 60 on the physical media. And I know there's a difference because I own that movie and I saw it back-to-back uh, because -back I, I checked it on myself. And there's clearly, clearly a difference between the 120 gig file and the yeah. uh, the 60 gear. Like the higher so, res, the source yeah. is. Dude, it's so much cleaner on the Cladescape, yeah. Have you checked out any of the new JVC projectors yet? Uh, the word is uh, October. The word is next month. Yeah, yeah. Phil Jones is going to do some reviews on him. He's he's pretty amped up on him, and Phil's the man, dude. So yeah, yeah. He's where he's on Projector Central now. Yeah, he's, we're going to uh, try to. He we're going to try around. to do streams. Yep. Yeah, we're. He's a great dude, man. We're going to try to do some streams with him on Audioholics um, or some content to try to bring the video aspect more into what we do, which is really cool. The, uh, he's been, I think he, he went from Sony over to, uh, Sony United. Yeah. When he does, you know, projector reviews.com. Yeah. Projector reviews. Is it projector reviews or projector central projector reviews? Oh, you know, they hit me up. Not, they hit me up like last week. Yeah. He's trying like, to yeah. do, do some video and audio stuff. He's just a really well-balanced technology guy. I mean, I was just talking to him about what he has in the house. He's like, yeah, I got some Wilsons in this room and this, and that, and I want to change it for the new BMW diamonds. And I'm like, damn, good to be the king. Uh, oh yeah. The, uh, D fours. Yeah. Yeah. He's got, he's going to use a pair of those. I think the eight hundreds you, uh, you still got those BMWs in your theater. What are you rocking now? I still got the BMWs. Yeah. I yeah. got the, uh, they're old. They're, 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 old. Like, they're like super old. I mean, but they're or like eight year like, old. No, they're like fucking. They're like ten are years they? old, twelve years old. I mean, they came out that long ago, right, but they right. still make them now. Because they because they sound good. I think I said that in the video because I when I did the video, I was like, "Yo, this came out like a decade ago." But I mean, speakers they don't really change that much if you think about it. I mean, you get a you get a great pair of speakers. It's gonna last you like maybe what? fucking forever. How many subs you say you had? Eight subs or some shit? I got 14 right now in stock. 14 subs in your theater room? In my inventory, I got like 14. Oh, in your inventory. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure in your like Best Buy, like spare buy. My uh, my house does look like Best Buy. My wife is pissed because I got shit in my kitchen. I got shit in my living room. <laughs> I got shit in my theater. I got shit in the hallway. You should see my garage right now. It's crazy. I wish I had a garage. I know. No. Well, I'm supposed to get these. Uh, I think Stark is supposed to. I don't know. You're familiar with Stark? You know who Stark is, right? Stark yeah, sounds. Yeah. Yeah. They're supposed to oh, send me their. Uh, really? This, well, they sent me their 15, which for a $900 sub, I was getting, I think, 7 hertz or 8 hertz in my room. What What kind of gain are you getting from your room, though? Uh, I don't know. Listen, I'm not a fucking engineer, but it must be a lot because that yeah, shit was you're, that, you're playing that low. Yeah, that was reaching down to single digits. And I, that's only happened with like 
one other no two other subs that was a kef and my rhythmic i was hitting single digits and yeah, the, i saw that the review you did on that yeah they make no. a good product man rhythmic's no joke yeah rhythmic's awesome they've been fucking they've been out forever too like at least a decade with the same models and that that's see that's what i like when we're talking about speakers and stuff like if you get a speaker that's a decade old and you haven't changed it like that's a i feel like that's that's a great investment i feel like people don't talk about that no i'm pretty happy with my what do you call them my my rtjs you don't like them i think they're homemade though. i never said that who's that is that gene <laughs> how'd you know that <laughs> uh, how'd you know that because he never sleeps <laughs> yeah, no, he fucking texts me like four in the morning sometimes. Yeah, that's my boy, dude. So he's got he's gonna do we're gonna do a speaker shootout. We've got um the uh the Revel 328, the Beryllium, we've got the right. new R RBH 8300s, and we're gonna have the Pearl Listens. That's All gonna right. be I already know who's day. gonna win, but go ahead. How how are you gonna do the shootout? Yeah, we're working on it. We're gonna do it in the theater room. Down the theater room, the treater room. Is this a subjective shootout? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's people listening, we're gonna do that's measurements, right. measurements on them, and we're you know, then we're gonna do some listening tests on it, the multitude of material. All right. So we're this not, is. We're not right, gonna put up a curtain, you know, and do the blind listening test. Which, you know, I mean, you're either a disciple of that or you're not. But we're we're gonna listen. They're all excellent, world class speakers. I think it would be kind of weird, like if you take measurements and then you both pick a winner. Uh, when you add the measurements with your choice, winner of choice, I think that would speak to your subjective nature, what you enjoy in that specific speaker. Well, we're not going to review the measurements before we said that. There's going to be a panel of us that are pretty serious listeners, and everybody's going to give their opinion. But you know? I think that w I, I think that would just say to people like. Um, there, this speaker is not the best speaker because uh, Don likes this particular signature and Gene likes this particular signature. Even though this particular signature doesn't uh, measure flat, you might like this one, but maybe Gene likes that one. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? That's his opinions, dude. We're, t we're just going to give our two cents on it as people that review but, and listen to a lot of audio. We're just going really, to listen to them. I mean, could what, you what, really call... Could you really call it a shootout at that point? Why wouldn't we call it a shootout? Is that non correct term? What what would she call it? Because it, it would be like it would be like the winner. You would have to have a winner. Yeah, but I mean, from mountain bikes to cars to whatever stuff you're in, you always have you know people on channels or different things that go through different products and review them and give their two cents on them. I mean that that's a common thing, you know. Unless well, everybody, if you're doing cars, agree, it's the best, you know. If if you all right, if you're doing cars or mountain bikes, the person at the finish line is going to win. That's the winner. That's you can't right. do that with speakers. Not not. It's I mean the mountain bike. It depends on the engine, dude. You know, it's characteristics of how it rides, balance. You know, okay. So you, it's you take, a, they got their own nomenclature. You know what I mean? <laughs> like like you take the same guy. He takes. He takes what five the bikes. fuck are you talking about, Shane? We're gonna reduce the speaker. Right? You, you, you're like a, you're you're like my ex ex wife. Like, I'm trying to come at you. Mean? What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm coming I'm at hot you. Hot or not real hot? I mean, really? I'm coming at you with you're, with the questions that I get when I do tired. when I do a comparison review. You're gonna have the guy that's like Gene like this one, but Don like this one, and then you got measurements, but it measured high. On the on the high side here, measured higher in 2K, but then this one measured higher at 35K or 35 hertz. So which one is better? So I don't know if you could call it a shootout. Okay, well, what should what should we call it? What's the nomenclature we should use? You just call it not shootout. I feel like you should be like the audio holic circle circle jerk. I mean, <laughs> you just call it uh, gang bang. I don't even know what you could call it really without getting without getting some uh, negativity. <laughs> Dude, you can do anything in this world and get negativity. It doesn't matter, right? But Liz, if you got a shootout, you got to have right. a definite it, winner. Hey, you have Nemo's to. right, dude. For, for personal chase. I, 
taste. I, we, that's we, what I'm I saying. That's what I'm there. saying. That's what right. I'm talking about. Like this is going to be a highly subjective shootout. This, but the, but I'm the always subjective speaker circle jerk. You know <laughs> what does everybody like best? <laughs> I mean, right. you can come. Do you ever leave your house? Do you ever leave your house? Listen, I can do it from here. You just got a new car, right? No. If you have a binaural mic, I can do it over here because I can oh. tell the difference between timbre and spatiality if you have you're, a binaural setup. Okay. You're just being fucking mean now. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Huh? Huh? You're just being shitty. <laughs> dude, you got to get up pretty early in the morning. You're just being an ass. Sorry, am I am I killing the monetize? <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the stream. We're gonna get off because yeah. Don is falling asleep. Uh, I'm not falling asleep. I caught your ass. We're, we're gonna get off. Thanks for signing up. Yo, Nemo, thank you for staying up. You're from California, so it's a little bit earlier for you. So thanks for the super chat. Thanks for everybody. Nemo's, right. Super chats. Nemo's right though. Nemo's like absolutely that's, right. That's exactly what I said as well. But I'm just trying to catch you to see what you're going to say. You didn't have a good enough answer from me. But thanks for watching the stream. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, sign up for Don's good. channel as well. I don't know what it's called, but sign when up for it. When it comes, I don't know. Genghis Don, I think that's what I want to call it. Genghis Dong? Genghis oh, Dong. Oh, Genghis Dong. Genghis Dong. I mean, did, did you, you've been talking to my girlfriend again? <laughs> oh, all right. I'm not saying that.